Cranky ha prodotto imbarcazioni di Cranky has made all types of boats, but it's hard tops that have always been successful. This is the Cranky M44HT and we've chosen to test it out for two good reasons. The first one is the enormous experience Cranky has with this type of boat. The second is that we're talking about one of their very successful recent launches. So we've just got to try it out. It's a modern range, immediately gives the impression of new. The hardtop structure and the carbon look swim board make it all the more sporty looking. I want to start our boat research with the propulsion system. We're looking at two 330 horsepower D60 engines. Usually boats this size have bigger engines like 200 horsepower. Lowering power though here, they've managed to use the stern drive propulsion. So the engine room doesn't have to be so big, which in turn means there's more living space inside the boat. It's not going to be a boring test. It's quite choppy out there. Cominciamo dalla minima velocità di planata, quella che dovete tenere quando le situazioni sono Starting at minimum planing, the point you need to be in really critical situations and you need to really control the boat's direction. The boat needs to be heading in the right direction. The boat's going at the right speed. We're coming away from the wake, so let's put our foot down a bit. We'll keep the trim in the lowest position. If the sea gets too choppy, we'll lower the flaps too. Doesn't look like we'll need to here though. And we're planing at about 13 knots. It's quite fresh today, there's a nip in the air, but you can keep the top down because not much wind comes in. The aerodynamics of this hardtop have been well studied. As for the rest, like I said, Cranky is a master when it comes to this type of boat. Even though we are moving ahead and into the waves, I think I can accelerate a bit more. I'm getting a bit on the left, drifting. That helps. Now though, I want to try and go up against a wave. This is a good cruising speed, 20 knots. And we're at 2,500 revs a minute and consuming about three and a half liters a mile. You can really feel the waves. I'm slightly at fault here, as you need to know the waves should be tackled head on. If we put one of the boat's sides up against the wave, of course the water's going to hit hard against it. And it wouldn't be long before you'd need lengthways runners, skates, in order to cut it. So it's better if we go against the waves like this. The sun is coming and going, makes the countryside look even nicer with these low clouds on the horizon. I like this position, sea to the bow, but if we change direction and have the sea behind us, what happens to the boat? How does she handle? The advantage of this yacht is that we have the stern drive, so there are two ways to correct the course, trim and flap. Okay, okay, seize to the side. I'll correct the flap. I'll see if I can straighten it up. Molto bene. Really good, positive effect. The boat, in truth, has interceptors, which are blades that descend to the stern mirror and appear just a few centimeters away from the line of the hull but just enough to change the incline of the boat both longitudinally and lengthwise. La 
Lasciamo alle nostre spalle Grado, bellissimo. Grado is over there, gorgeous, have you seen it? And we're heading towards San Giorgio di Nogaro, where Cranky has its nautical base. Ora, abbiamo il mare in poppa. So now the sea is behind us and I'm going to take the flaps down completely. I don't want the bow to pitch in the dip of the wave, or it would have the wave leading me. I want to be directing this boat with the stern driver, rudder, and direct the boat exactly where I want to go. I think it's ready to go a little faster, dance a little, and we need to fully try her out. So down goes the throttle and up goes the trip. Even with these conditions, I'm managing to keep to a cruising speed of 25 knots and 2,800 revs a minute, and consumption has stayed stable at 3.6 litres a mile. Of course, I want to push it to the max. Do a thorough test, you know. Lift the flaps. And give it some trim. 30, 31, 3004, 3005. A little flap on the straight. 33, 34, 34 knots. With a 14 meter boat, 12 tons, two 330 horsepower engines. Would never have believed it. The boatyard said they could do 35 knots. Why can't I? Maybe because the sea is choppy. I'll play around with the flaps. Okay. And raise some trim. I can hear from the noise that the engine revs are going up. Ah, yes, they're singing now. And how? Probably using every one of those 330 horses. And here we are, 35 knots. We're there. And I'm happy. It passed the sail test with flying colours. Let's see now how the motorisation engine choice has influenced the living quarters. Below deck there is a lovely dining area. It's important with a hard top to have an area like this one. With a decked out kitchen and a lunch or relax zone for evenings or whenever the weather stops you from going out. Cranky is a master of space usage, an important quality, as there's never enough space on a boat. There are two cabins. At the bow, there's an elegant captain's table with two wardrobes, the latest cabinets, a corner to sit down, and read a book, and a dedicated bathroom. There are three bunks in the guest room, it's in the centre of the boat, low down. You'll definitely rest well here. Then two bunks can be put together to form a big double bed. Above deck, there's the characteristic sun deck on the bow bridge, with drinks and general storage. The sun deck at the stern is surrounded by a pretty wide and submersible swim board. Then there's a sofa for five people with an extendable table. And on the left, there's the kitchen and chaise lounge. The hardtop means you get a fantastic wide open vista to look at the sky.
Cranky has four production bases, all in the north of Italy, close to Lake Como. At Pientedo, the company's original base, then Colico and Rogolo for boats up to 80 feet long. There are also two plants in Udin in San Giorgio di Nogaro. In one they produce the smallest boat bits and the other is where they built the biggest yachts and assemble them, especially those parts that cause trouble transporting the boat along the road. At San Giorgio di Nogaro, there's the private key and Italo Monzino Marine Test Center, where all the cranky boats are tried out, 365 days a year, holidays included. Well then, so if you like the M44 HT, I'd say there were some good reasons to buy it. What are you asking? The price? Do I have to tell you? And it was all going so well. Okay then, starting at 300,000 euros.